You've probably at least heard of fracking, but what exactly is it and why is it controversial? We are going to take a look at fracking and whether or not it's a safe and viable source of energy. Fracking is actually an abbreviation for the term hydraulic fracturing. Fracking is a method of harvesting natural gas from shale rock formations. Essentially, the way that it works is that wells are drilled into shale rock and then a mixture of water, sand and various other chemicals is injected into the rock, which causes fractures, hence the name. The liquid is pumped out of the well, but the sand holds the fractures open, which allows natural gas to be extracted from the well. The United States currently consumes around 27 trillion cubic feet of natural gas per year, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration. And in 2014, 27% of the electricity generated in America came from natural gas. Of that 27, close to half, 47% to be exact, came from shale deposits. So fracking in the U.S. isn't uncommon. Some of the major fracking sites in the country are located in Oklahoma, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Fracking has been notably less successful internationally. A number of countries, including Germany, Scotland, and Bulgaria, have actually banned fracking due to health and environmental concerns. Proponents of fracking insist that the process is safe, but many of these groups are run by organizations with a vested interest in fracking. For example, Energy from Shale has a website with basic information about how fracking works, along with a large amount of pro-fracking resources. And as it turns out, Energy from Shale is owned by the American Petroleum Institute, a trade association for the oil and natural gas industries. So what do we actually know about the effects of fracking? There have been a number of high profile fracking accidents in the last few years, but are those outliers or are they indicative of a greater risk? We'll be looking into the direct impact of fracking in a few minutes, but first let's take a look at some of the indirect impacts. For starters, fracking uses an enormous amount of water. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that between 70 and 140 billion gallons of water are used for fracking every year. That's roughly equivalent to the amount of water used by Chicago, the third largest city in the country. All of that water has to come from somewhere, and it often comes from groundwater reserves, rivers, and lakes. This brings up some obvious concerns about water shortages, especially in conjunction with the hazards that the actual fracking process can pose to water supplies. It's also worth noting that because shale gas deposits are not always located right next to convenient water sources, water must sometimes be transported by truck. A study from Boulder, Colorado estimates that 700 truck round trips are required to transport 5 million gallons of water to a single fracking site. Trucks are also used to transport heavy equipment and chemicals to and from tracking, fracking sites which brings the total round trip count to over 1,100 in a two month period. So when evaluating the environmental impacts of the fracking industry, we should be aware of the gas consumption of these trucks, as well as the pollutants that they put into the atmosphere. Sand is another key part of the fracking process. And as I mentioned, the sand particles injected into the wells hold those cracks in the rock open so that the natural gas can flow out However, fracking companies don't just shovel sand off of beaches. The mining and use of sand results in silica particles being released into the air. Inhalation of silica is known to cause lung cancer, and the risk to workers as well as people living near fracking sites should not be ignored. Eric Eswine, a researcher with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, conducted a study that found dangerous levels of silica in the air near fracking sites. Eswine discussed his findings in an interview with NPR. He and his colleagues visited 11 fracking sites in five states, Arkansas, Colorado, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, and Texas. At every site, the researchers found high levels of silica in the air. 79% of the collected samples exceeded the recommended exposure limits set by Eswine's agency. The fracking process itself also carries with it certain risks to the environment as well as public health. In 2014, there were 484 spills reported by oil and gas companies in Colorado. About 10% of those spills resulted in contamination of water resources. 10% uh, may not seem like much, but that's a very high degree of risk when it comes to what is arguably 
the most important natural resource. Meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, there have been a number of high-profile fracking incidents involving contaminated drinking water. Last year, scientists found traces of drilling chemicals in the drinking water of Bradford County. And as recently as this March, two Pennsylvania families were awarded $4.24 million in a seven-year case against Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation, whose fracking operations were found to have polluted drinking water with methane. Additionally, while there have been only 271 official complaints regarding contaminated water in Pennsylvania since December of 2007, over 2,300 additional complaints were improperly filed and recorded. The fracking complaints were stored in filing cabinets and most cases weren't entered into any formal central tracking system. This means that the risk of contamination is likely much higher than reported because large numbers of complaints aren't even being accounted for. Once they contaminate water supplies, the chemicals used in fracking can cause all sorts of health problems, including cancer and liver disease. Air pollution is also a huge concern. During the fracking process, wastewater known as flowback returns to the surface and then chemicals may be released into the air from the flowback, including toxic compounds like benzene, a hydrocarbon. In fact, a study of fracking sites in Texas found dangerously high levels of benzene in the air near the wells. Benzene occurs naturally in petroleum and can also be found in cigarette smoke. Short-term exposure to benzene in the air can cause dizziness and headaches. The major effect of benzene from long-term exposure is on the blood. Benzene causes harmful effects on the bone marrow and can cause a decrease in red blood cells leading to anemia. The Department of Health and Human Services has determined that benzene causes cancer in humans. Long-term exposure to high levels of benzene in the air can cause leukemia, cancer of the blood-forming organs. But perhaps the most troubling consequence of fracking is the potential for induced seismic events, earthquakes. A 2015 study published in the Bulletin of Seismological Society of America, found 77 earthquakes in Ohio that were linked to fracking activities in the area. The earthquakes in question were relatively minor, none above magnitude 3. Most fracking earthquakes are caused by the injection of wastewater into disposal wells. A series of earthquakes in Oklahoma have been linked to the disposal of wastewater by both oil and natural gas companies. The largest of these was a 5.7 magnitude earthquake in Prague, Oklahoma, which was the biggest in the state's history. It destroyed 14 homes, damaged infrastructure and numerous buildings, and injured two people. Even if fracking had no negative environmental and health impacts, it's still an industry that continues our dependence on fossil fuels for political and national security reasons. About 17% of our oil imports come from Saudi Arabia, and we've talked extensively on uh, the program about the many problems with our continued partnership with that brutal extremist regime. Furthermore, armed conflicts over energy resources are becoming more common, and it's in the best interest of peace everywhere to move towards sustainable energy resources. So we've seen that fracking clearly carries with it numerous significant risks to public health as well as national security. Despite this, fracking is still permitted in a majority of American states. New York State did manage to ban fracking last year, but as of right now, no other state with significant natural gas reserves has implemented a ban. In California, Governor Jerry Brown has voiced support of fracking in the state despite the fact that the risks to California are particularly severe. For one thing, California is prone to earthquakes and the risk for a major earthquake caused by fracking should not be ignored. Additionally, California is in the middle of a drought. The amount of water combined with the risk of contamination makes fracking an industry that California cannot afford to sustain. And there is a moratorium on offshore drilling currently in California. We know that fracking is bad for the environment, and we know that it's bad for our health in the short term as well. It's not in our best national security interests, and given the advancements that have been made and will be made in alternative sustainable energy technologies, fracking is simply not necessary, and it doesn't make sense from an economic or environmental standpoint.